welcome welcome to another episode of the watercolor show live we live broadcasting live here from beautiful derbyshire in the uk welcome to my studio folks which is kind of a bit of a painting studio and a bit of a man cave if i'm being honest but yes we do have pinball machines in the background but it, it is a painting studio anyway welcome welcome to the studio for another episode loving this walk color show and it's great to see that you're enjoying it as well thanks for thanks for tuning in and um just want to put it out there straight away massive massive shout out to, um for the super chat for the super chat donation what are the super chat is a way of donating to this show to this channel it's the lifeboat it keeps it afloat um so big big thank you to uh joan hall um hi to hi to joan there thanks for watching again thanks for taking part in donating to the struggle the eternal struggle that is 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 being an artist um and of course the watercolor show so thank you to joan hall for the 2.99 super chat you're amazing thank you for that um wonderful um sophie sophie perry you're a star thank you for the 10 pound donation um on on the super chat again it all goes to um keep this show funded and we'll keep putting these out there um sophie perry's put thank you matthew for starting me out on the road to watercolor painting um from steve in romford so steve sophie thank you for the ten pound uh, donation, it does mean a lot. It really does. And then um, Joan Hall again. You've put another donation on four ninety nine. You're amazing. Thank you again. Um, and um, David Simpson. Dave Simpson. Hi to David. Um, David's a bit of a local chap to me. I believe he used to, used to come to the art lessons. I used to teach locally. Hi to David. Thank you for the five pound, David Simpson. Big shout out. Any questions you've got. Pop them in the super chat. Pop them on the chat, folks. We'll try and answer them uh, live if we can. So thank you to Dave Simpson. Thanks to Andrew Mayer for a £4 super chat donation. Every penny goes back into this show. You wouldn't believe how much tech is surrounding this. There's a lot of tech surrounding. There really is. Um, so Andrew Mayer, thank you for the £4 donation. Um, and Rosemary Baldock, loving the animation there, Rosemary. Thank you for the £3 super chat donation. You're amazing. Again, all of you, it does mean a lot, okay? It is purely a voluntary thing, folks. Don't feel you have to do this. It just, it just keeps it flowing. It keeps it flowing. It keeps the paint flowing, which is what I like to say. Um, Angela Guest. Angela Guest, £5 donation from you. Thank you. Gratefully received. Um, Diane Swain. Diane Swain, another £5 donation from you. Thank you, Diane. Thank you so, so much. Um, so thank you to Diane Swain, Angela Guest, Rosemary Baldock and Andrew May. Thanks for tuning in live. Alison Miroff, a £9.99 donation. Again, so grateful. Thank you for this. Really am, really am grateful. Um, how do you get super chat? So at the bottom of the chat, um, it depends how you're watching, how you're watching the actual watercolour show. If you're watching it, uh, live on your computer the chat is kind of down the right side of the screen um and there's like a little bit of a sort of dollar sign you click it and that's where you put the um super chat there so it all helps it all helps the struggle but here we are here we are for episode two of the watercolor show i hope you enjoyed the first episode it was a pleasure to do it it is all live it's all live so you never know what's going to happen the basic idea of this show is to do a watercolour demonstration and the theme today for the watercolour demonstration is going to be a scene of Central Park in New York. Now I've painted Central Park a few times, I love New York as a place, it's amazing. So I have um, I've sketched out a scene here and let me show you the sketch actually, I'll show you the sketch. Um, here it is. Now. I've used this sketch in the past for various scenes. I've done a, a summer and an autumn scene of New York, but I've never done my favourite season. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to put it out there right away. It's going to be a winter scene. It's going to be a snowy scene. When I think of New York, I think of, you know, Christmas and snow, and it's going to be a snow scene of Central Park in New York. That is the sketch. If you want to have a go at this yourself, if you want to watch it back at any point obviously you can do that 
um, you can pause the video this will always remain on um youtube on the youtube channel let's try let's try and get 50 likes folks remember we are live let's get 50 likes come on let's take that likes above 50 can we do that i'm putting it out there as a mission give us the thumbs up click the like button folks um it really makes a difference you need to do it you need to do it come on 47 likes let's let's keep it going if you do we've got a special treat at the end keep it clean what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze in some extra some viewers paintings that you've sent in right at the end 62 likes the next mission is to take it to 100 likes big shout out to roger cleaver there for donating five pound hi roger thanks for watching live thanks for the donation it goes straight back into the running of this youtube channel and there's a lot of content ray russo five pound donation again amazing um, thank you so much for that, Ray Russo. Hello to you. Shout out to you. Thanks for taking part in all the workshops that you do as well, all of you. And Kevin Baines, a £5 donation. £5 donation from Kevin Kevin Baines. Hi to Kevin. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the donation. Peter Coles, £10. Very generous. Thank you, Kevin. You are a star. We've got 90 likes. Let's try and get 100. Come on. We can work as a team, can't we? We can work as a team. Let's get back to the sketch. So I've sketched this in, working on a portrait, 90 likes, let's get it to 100. Um, we are working on a portrait orientation, a portrait orientation, and the bottom third will be landscape, and without a doubt, the best time of year to go to New York, if you've ever been, I've been all seasons, is winter. Beautiful at Christmas, stunning, and this is going to be, not a Christmas, but a winter scene. Three more likes, we've got a hundred. Come on, let's do this. That little click of that button makes such a difference, folks. It really does. Give it a click, give it a click, give it a click. Um, Pat Pepper. Thank you, Pat, for the £5 donation. The £5 super chat from Pat Pepper. A big shout out and hello to you. Uh, Margaret de Rucha. Rucha? Rucha? I apologise if that's wrong, but thank you for the €5.49 donation. Thank you so much, Dave Slater. Keep it up. I like the little animation, Dave Slater. Shout out to Dave for the £5 donation. And Dave, um, yeah, great animation. A little man doing a bit of weightlifting there. Sadie Thompson, £5 donation again. Thank you so much. Uh, Lynn Fletcher as well. You're a star for the £4.99. So thanks to Lynn Fletcher, Sadie Thompson, Dave Slater, Margaret De Reuter and Pat Pepper, Peter Coles for the past few Super Chats. You're all super. It doesn't matter whether you donate or not. Honestly, folks, it's not about that. It's about painting. These little bits just help to keep the paint flowing. We always say that. Lynn Fletcher, 4 99 donation. Thank you, Lynn. Welcome back. Uh, big shout out to Darcy Marshall as well for keeping an eye on the chat as well. Right. That's the sketch. Carol Barnard. Big thank you from Carol. Carol's been doing the workshops right from day one. Thanks, Carol, for the £10 donation. Thanks to everyone that's been supporting me through the past year. Th through the past, I've been working full-time as an artist for 20 years, and now we're in this virtual world. It's amazing. Carol Barnard, £10 donation. Thank you for the Super Chat, Carol. Thanks for being a supporter. Right, let's look at the painting here. So this is on the actual paper, folks. Now, what I've done, what I've done is... I've sketched it in on a quarter imperial sheet of watercolour paper. Now, watercolour paper comes obviously in different sizes. When I say quarter imperial, what we kind of referring to here is roughly 11 inch by 15 inch. I've stuck it to a board. It's a bit of, it's a bit of wood actually. It's a bit of wood. It's a bit of wood. Um, quite a light sketch. I'm looking forward to this because I love painting snow. I know it's not the right time of year, but who cares? It's just about getting the paint flowing. Elaine Reed, five pound super chat. Thank you so much. Love your, your tutorials, chat and workshops. Keep supporting the workshops. The virtual workshops mean such a lot to me. They have been the they have been the artistic escapism source for the entire world for the past year. But we're going to keep them running. Please keep supporting me on the workshops. So I'm pretty much ready to go, folks. We've got the sketch here. Now, it's not just about painting this watercolour, this show. It's a little bit more. We're going to have a few things. We're going to have some viewers' questions, which you've already sent in. I've got a, I've picked a few out. Um, 
and uh, we have um, a watercolor SOS. We're going to solve your your art problems a little bit later. Also, going to have some watercolor hints and tips. Some of my top tips. Um, review some recent or new art products that you might not have come across, and also we're going to have um, because we've got a hundred likes over 100 likes we're going to feature some viewers paintings if we can get those likes to 150 we'll feature a couple of extra viewers paintings we really will thank you so much okay so let's look at the palette for the watercolor demo then what we've got here is my kind of standard palette if you like um it's pretty rammed with all various colors and and various things and when it comes to colours, it really depends on your palette and the colours I'm going to be using. You might not have, but you know something, it really doesn't matter. Let's get the camera that way a touch. It really doesn't matter what colours you use. Something similar would be fine. So I, I've squirted the colours in the palette here. OK, uh, working with tube watercolour. And the colours I'm using are part of my own range of paints, Matthew Palmer collection. Um, this one here is called natural grey, for example. This one is called natural yellow. There it is. We've got natural brown. There's two skin tones in the range. Skin tone light, skin tone dark. We can see them here. There's the skin tones. Skin tone light, skin tone dark. If you've not got these colours, folks, please don't worry. Because I'll mention how you can sort of capture this yourself. We've got some natural violet as well. I've got some white uh, paint here, whether it be opaque or transparent. And we'll talk more about opaque versus transparent a little bit later. This here is uh, opaque white, similar to gouache. Uh, I'll pop that just there. I need to check. Similar to gouache, uh, similar to um, similar to like a white acrylic. So it's just a white paint. I've popped the colours in here. We'll talk more about them as we progress through the picture. What we've got here, folks, is three standard watercolour brushes, a large, a medium and a small. This one's a 20. This one's a size 10. This one's a size 6. Just take a little notice how pointy that brush actually is. Can you see how pointy it actually is? Very pointy brush, that one. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if yours is not as pointy as that. OK, it really doesn't matter. Uh, because we've got some some other variations of brushes and we'll talk about these a little bit later as we use them we'll talk about them okay but those three brushes will certainly get us listen i want to apologize for the palette it's it's been on the old heinz baked beans okay see it's got a bit of chronic flatulence i apologize for that i really do apologize thanks for tuning in folks this is great let's get stuck in to the watercolor demo yes we are live we are broadcasting this live as well which is really good so any questions you might have drop them in the chat as well so here we are ready for action i want to paint in a nice sky but before i do anything i want to take a little bit of masking tape throwing things on the floor there at the back of me long enough to go across the picture remove stickiness and stick this across this kind of horizon line the base this is the D dakota building here um we're going to pop this up here as well. So we've just created a bit of a, a separation of sky versus landscape. All right. Perfect. Perfect job. Just the job we need. Let's move over to the palette. What we'll do is prep a few colors. I want to use this big brush. Um, first of all, I mentioned using all the brushes. We'll talk about those in a second or two, but basically just using water. So I've got the water. I've got a couple of water pots here hanging around. Um, and basically what I want to do, folks, I'm working on a slight tilt as well. Just kind of bear that in mind here. I'm focusing just on the background of the picture at this point. OK, so this paper is one hundred and forty pound. That's bloody expensive. Um, Three hundred gram in weight. It's cotton, it's pure cotton, 
pure cotton which means it's quite absorbent so the first bit of water that you put on if i'm being honest pretty much just just goes into the paper so a couple of coats of water is always advisable if not a third coat but a good tip is to do this wipe the brush on the side wipe the brush on the side get that excess off the brush so on to number three on to number three coat and then let's go for some wintery colors what i want to do here actually um is i want to use some of the skin tone this is this one being light skin tone light skin tone beautiful bring it over to the picture what we'll do here folks is we're going to twist twist in this skin tone it's the lighter one of the two here it's a nice color to work with um nice twist working down working down bring it in the brush is flat to the paper which is nice so I want to go for a bit of an evening or a morning, however we feel. Get plenty of the skin tone coming down the back here. Can't You can't go wrong, really. You can't possibly go wrong. There it is. Twist it in. Twist it all in. Love that colour. It's like a... It's almost like a... A terracotta colour. It's almost like a terracotta colour is the skin tone. Brill, that's nice. That's it's added some colour already. Um, back to the palette. Clean the brush. Wipe off that excess water. Always do that. It's good to have some kitchen paper handy as well. To be fair, wipe off that excess. Then we're going to use violet. Now, if you've not got skin tone, mix a bit of a orange. If you've not got natural violet, mix a blue with a touch of red. Natural violet's a bit different to that, but you can get a violet from. You can pretty much do this entire picture from primary colours. To be fair from the top from the top don't be afraid to get some strength in color here the reason i like the skin tone or the orangey tinge with the violet is that when the colors mix you get a very interesting almost a gray and twisting your brush like i'm doing here you've seen me do this before if you've watched me demo in the past it it makes a warm gray you can see that nice warm grey. I'm, I'm tilting it up so the studio lights don't catch it, um, which is nice. Bring it through the buildings there. Little bit of the background, capturing a wintry atmosphere, but also quite warm, quite warm in the colours. Brilliant. There we go. Can't go wrong with this. What we could do at this point, folks, back to the palette, introduce a little bit of grey. Now, here I'm using natural grey. Natural grey is a mixture of primary colours. We'll talk more about grey a little bit later in Matthew's Hints and Tips, OK? So we'll talk more about grey later. You can mix the grey from um, your primary colours, which we'll have a little matter about a little bit later on, OK? Let's put some darkness in. I don't want too much darkness just enough to add some interest to the sky so it's that little bit of gray coming in you can see i'm twisting in here loving the three colors the tone from the skin tone the violet and of course the beautiful um violet as well working with the gray that's enough i'm i'm happy with the sky at that point i don't want to go crazy with the sky it kind of spoils it so a little bit of a twist clean the brush really well um Pinch it through some kitchen paper, so your brush kind of, you see I'm squeezing it, so your brush kind of goes flat and you can just ever so gently give it a bit of a soften. Any hard lines that you might have that you're not happy with, you can just use this flat brush which is damp. You can see the brush here. I can see a few people talking in the chat about using canvas uh, versus uh, paper you need to use proper watercolor paper here folks because anything but doesn't really work if we're being completely honest okay let's take a look at these brushes here so the three standard brushes i'll pop those up here in this large collection of nicely colored brushes we have 
tree brushes, blending blades, branch brushes. Here, I've got something called a medium tree and texture brush. You can probably just about make out the writing on there. It's, it's a brush I designed quite a few years ago. Tree and texture brush. Okay, what I want to do with this, it's, it's designed for stippling. Basically, we're going to take some dark skin tone and then here, we're going to take some grey. Notice the consistency is a lot richer here because I want that strength to shine through. Okay, I really do. It's important. So, stippling. So the brush goes all nice and spiky. You can see that beautiful spiky brush there, yeah? Let's get close in. I want to get really close in at this point. So I'm just going to zoom the camera in. I remember we are live here, folks, so there's no necessary editing as such. Uh, gentle taps of this brush. Gentle taps. This is dark skin tone, that lovely late autumn, early winter colour. A bit of autumnal tone coming through. I've been to New York in October and it snowed. So it doesn't really matter. It's nice to get this bit of interest coming into the picture. Bring it down in front of the buildings. Fill it in. Work it up. Where it meets damp paint, it's just slightly spreads. These are nice for doing stippling. You can see the individual prongs of the brush. Let's try and get a little bit closer in for you so you can really see what we're talking about here. So you can see with every tap of the brush, it spreads. I'm going to continue this down. Filling it all in giving it all a nice blend and it's quite a nice thing to do you can really see how the paint kind of sort of stipples really you know and it really adds a bit of interest to it and um, it just takes some of the fear away from um, trying to paint trees because let's face it they're not necessarily the easiest of things in the world to do zoom back on that so we've got a good coverage of the starting point but in the palette we've got the gray so we'll take the gray there's the gray i've not cleaned the brush in any way here i don't need to clean the brush um i just want to keep it you know fresh and um active and then we're going to work right down into the edge So I need shadow, and this is what I'm doing. I'm adding the shadow to the trees. Now, it might look a bit aggressive. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? Doesn't really matter, to be fair, where the light's coming from. Um, it's just about what works at this point. I always say that. Light does what it wants. It's like water and sand, for that matter. Stipple it in. And then once you've got to that stage, which is pretty much a complete coverage, clean the brush, squeeze it through the fingers... So the brush is damp and then what we'll do here again a little bit closer in if we can beautiful we're going to stipple the edge this brush is damp is it mere is it moist stipple it and give it a bit of a blur can you see how it's blending i'm literally stippling over the edge of the gray and it's going to give some softness and let the paint spread blend and all become part of one giant tree set of trees lovely job look how it all nicely blends in as smooth as ketchup from a bottle clean the brush again any hard edges there's a bit of a hard edge there where there wasn't much water or it was starting to dry a little bit you can just dampen it down make it look a bit misty make it look a little bit misty here's okay because the sky was damp you know and that's what you wanted it to be so i'm softening away now, that was the medium tree brush, which has given me a nice coverage. 
around the trees. I've actually got a smaller version in this as well. Um, here it is, smaller version. Um, it's the same brush, just half the size. Again, Matthew Palmer Tree and Texture Brush. If you like any of the products, folks, you can check them all out on Watercolor TV. Big shout out to Tina Fagan. Thank you for the 10 euro all the way from Ireland, I believe. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you uh, for taking part in the show again and helping the show continue into the future. Tina's put love the demos, workshops and all the great tutorials. They brighten up my day. P.S. Put you. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that, shall we? Um, yeah. The flatulence problem, yeah, I know. The palette's got issues, if I'm honest. It kind of, it's it's been like it for a while. Um, crafting with Theresa. Theresa, is that the right way to say that? But anyway, big shout out to you, um, Theresa, 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 Theresa. Ten pound donation. People are so generous, really are. Thank you so much. Big shout out to you, Theresa, Theresa. Crafting with Theresa and Tina Fagan. We'll try and work on the flatulence problem, not me, the palette. Back to the picture. In fact, actually back to the palette because we have the gray here. Make it a little bit darker. Now, if you're mixing this gray, you wanna be using your primary colors. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Cause we wanna give you a crash course on shadows a bit later on folks. Stick with it, lots of stuff to do. We're gonna give that a bit of a stipple here with a smaller brush. While things are a little bit damp still, I wanna put some separation in to the trees. So get in fairly close in. Again, I don't care where the light is. Smaller tree brush. Now, if you've not got a tree brush, you could just stipple any brush, but bear in mind, it's not good for the bristles. I'm putting these quite dark shadows in here. Bear with me. Don't worry about it. Don't be afraid, be terrified. We're gonna stipple in some shadows just by adding some separation. Now that looks very rough. You're not kidding. Clean your brush, wipe it almost dry, go onto those areas and blend and blend away. Stipple and blend. Stipple and blend. And can you see it's moving the paint? And what it's doing is it's adding shadows into the trees, adding shadows into the trees. And it creates a lovely, look at that, that beautiful sense of separation. Big thank you to Christine Windridge, Christine. Um, thank you for the three pound donation. Thank you so very much. Big shout out. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. It's always nice to do this folks, but just look at the screen, <laughs> kind of half close your eyes, squint at the picture, just a little squint at the picture. And what you'll hopefully notice is that the, the shadows just sit nicely in the scene. That's what it's all about, folks. That's how we like to work on um, a watercolour. You know, it's nice to work on a watercolour with that little bit of... It's it's using the right colour for the job, and that is definitely the right colour, though. It's really brought those trees into play. We've got depth, we've got distance, a little bit of mist. You can really see how they create a nice little bit of separation what i'm going to do now folks i want to zoom back on the whole picture for you there it is um that's a good stage to be at what i'm going to do now is very very gently remove the masking tape nice and steady now if you want to use a hair dryer to heat the back of this up yeah you've got to stick to the end i can see someone in the chat saying you know uh, Matthew says it's the last 10 minutes that make the picture every time every single time but that's a good starting point there folks that's a really really nice starting point it is and um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to um, answer one of the viewers questions that's actually cropped in so this is kind of um... <laughs> So 
viewers questions um this particular question has come from actually carol barnard and carol donated in the super chat and carol was asking about uh watercolor blending watercolor blending you know it's it sounds simple and i'll be honest with when i first started teaching watercolors all those years ago in the late 90s showing the old age there um i just said to people put your paint on and blend it away but everybody struggled to do blending they really did so how how to combat watercolor blending how does how does blending actually work you know it's it seems simple but it's used in every single thing from the the feathers of the bird to the buildings in something like that new york scene so thanks to carol for the question and i'll just quickly have a little chat about blending and show you some of my favorite blending techniques graduating the paint away is what we're talking about here now a common problem that people do i'll i'll show you this is they'll use a a brush and nine times out of ten if you're blending colors it's going to be something like the shadow so if we take a gray we'll take a gray and we'll paint a very thin line of gray paint now if i said to you as an artist blend that away from the gray to nothing you'd probably clean your brush you'd probably give it a good five or six wipes and you'd put your brush next to this and you'd try to blend it and all it'd do is just kind of leave a hard gray line now there's a few reasons for that the main reason the main reason for that is because one there wasn't enough paint to blend and secondly that brush is way too dry so the way i tell people to do it is to put a decent chunk of paint on first normally twice the width of the brush that you're working on clean the brush and then one of my famous sayings is just a couple of taps on tissue so it's just damp put the water next to it so there's a bit of a puddle of water there and then move into the gray or whatever color you're blending and go in the same direction go right to the edge and then wiggle the brush forward and back and keep moving it up to the edge keep moving it you've got a puddle of water here waiting for you and look how smooth it blends away now that could be used for something as nice as a shadow on the side of a building and just showing you a very crude way of putting shadows on here clean the brush couple of taps remember the couple of taps not too dry put the water next to it and then into the gray make sure you go right into those edges it's it's definitely a secret and you could write a book just on watercolor blending if we're being completely honest if i pop a line underneath here clean the brush couple of taps soften that down can you see how i've created a ghost building you can almost kind of see a building there can't you if i do that as well and this and then clean the brush and give it a couple of taps here you can see how that just kind of your mind fills it in so that's what blending is now we do have a product and um, as i sit here now in april 2021 these have been out of stock for a while and these are the blending blades now there's two blending blades you've got a large and a small these make the process a bit easier because the bristle reactivates the color so the two clear ways to blend first of all okay like i said tip number one put a decent amount of paint on twice the width clean the brush method number one couple of taps put a bit of a puddle next to it or right on the edge of it and then move into it and go forward and back but quite often you do this and you just end up dragging the paint too far so you clean your brush again give it a couple of taps and then just feather the edge away refresh the brush that's a lovely bit of blending the second way to blend is to put your paint on again nice and wide clean the brush couple of taps as you get more confident maybe go straight up to the edge and wiggle it in the same direction as the brush stroke and just move it and keep moving it and keep moving it until it disappears that's the way i blend 
that's my blending method if you struggle with this and you're new to painting maybe you could try where you put the puddle next to it so a couple of successful ways of blending watercolor and i know if there was a top 10 of the most common problems people have with painting blending would certainly be in the top five without question it really would big shout out to arthur woolley for the 4.99 hello arthur thanks for your support thanks for booking on the workshops please keep booking them we will continue doing them if anyone's got any inspirational ideas for future painting workshops or subjects drop them in the chat we'll have a look thank you arthur i hope you enjoy the show uh, mary kelly um from ireland mary possibly are you from ireland mary i believe you are um, thanks for the five euros 49 cents donation a shout out to you and arthur for the donation enjoy the show let's get back to the watercolor demo so it's pretty much dry at this point um and we are going to work on the foreground of the picture so over to the palette i could use a size 10 brush but i'll tell you what i want to do i'm actually going to use i mentioned in that little little q a sos section about these um blending blades i've got the large and the small one here again currently out of stock and that's thanks to brexit and to covid we are waiting for these things arriving there's two there's a large and a small one these are a stiff bristle that reactivate the paint so i'll, I'll show you this because i'm going to blend now on the picture i'm going to clean the brush really really well give it a good thorough clean and i want to use natural violet natural violet was used in the sky again you can mix blue with a touch of red it won't be the same but it'll be close so a fairly decent chunk of color a nice snowy area across this foreground is going to be the secret at this point the first thing i want to do is i want to work along the edge of the footpath clean the brush a couple of taps on the tissue and then just now i'm not put a puddle of water here i'm just putting the brush inside and I'm scrubbing it. The blending blades are almost like a scrubbing brush, okay, which is lovely. And then I'm gonna work around the edge and make sure that disappears off into the mist. Clean the brush again, couple of wipes on the tissue again, and then continue. Even if that paint had slightly dried, these blending blades would give you the best chance of blending the paint away. It would, honestly, again, forward and back. Um, Blend it out, smooth it across, keep going. It's a big area, that's a huge area to blend. Also, we can start to take a bit of colour up with that damp brush into the hillside. If you've been to Central Park in New York, you'll know it's very, it's got lots of rocks and lots of tree roots. It's really nice, it's a beautiful place to be. And the fact you're surrounded 360 by all these wonderful buildings as well makes it even more special. But it's a massive, it's a massive place, it really is. There we go. So that is a good smooth blend, like a good cheap whiskey. Hey, eh? let's come back a little bit on the zoom so you can see that. Love that gorgeous turquoise colour. Thank you, Betsy, Betsy Ensley, for the uh, five pound super chat, five dollars super chat. Hello uh, from you, are you in Canada or um, in in the US? But thank you for the five five dollar super chat. Shout out to you. Thank you for the workshop. It allows um, those of us that are not in the UK to learn from you. As if we were there well that's it i never would have dreamed in 2020 and 21 that i'd be teaching people from all over the world via the power of the internet and that's exactly what's happened we'll take a close look at the workshops a little bit later on let's continue uh more of the same really here's the violet look beautiful color nice nice full brush um of paint here I want to make it look as though it's it's flat I, I don't care about light at this point i just want to make this thing look three-dimensional so working along here i can put this paint on quite freely
clean the brush. Again, those two taps straight into that paint. Look how much paint I've put on. I've put a big chunk. The blending blades are large in size, so it forces you to put enough paint on to blend. But like I say, if you don't have these folks, um, just use a size 10 round or 12 brush. But smooth them together. Keep refreshing that brush in the water. Bring a little bit up into the into the um, side so you can see how we've created a snow covered walkway which is lovely now what I'm going to do now folks is pop that brush away and I'm going to use the smaller version of the same brush it's half the size Blending blades, very powerful tools, folks. If you've got them, use them. Get used to using them. Load up both sides of the brush. Um, and then back to the picture. What we're going to do here is we're going to work at the back of the mound. So I, I want to be rotating the board from time to time. I want to swizz it around here. And here we've got the footpath that comes around the bend, if you know what I mean. We're going to go in and make it look as though we can blend it out and it's 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 got a bit of depth to it can you see if i look at it the right way can you see how it sort of takes you around the the corner it takes you around the corner it does wonderful listen could i just say the biggest thank you ever to gabby smith gabby that is such a generous donation a 50 dollar donation to the show absolutely amazing and also gabby i want to say a big thank you for all the gifts you sent my little boy jacob his birthday is coming up um in a couple of weeks and you're a star at christmas everything very very grateful you have been such I've been doing these nice workshops, you've been, you've been enjoying them, but I've been enjoying all the letters and all the feedback and all the gifts we've had. Gabby, thank you so much. Thank you for, for watching, for making the effort to tune in today, and thank you for the uh, very generous super chat. You're a star. And also, you've got a couple of my paintings as well on you all. You've got a leopard and a tiger. I hope they are giving you lots of hours of artistic pleasure. There you go. Thank you. Brill. Okay, so nice. Let's put more shadows into this thing. I love it. When we start to do this, you mold this. This is what I enjoy more than anything about painting. Okay, it's the violet. If you've not got this violet, please don't worry. Please don't worry. Like I say, you can just pretty much use any mix of red and blue. It won't quite be as vibrant, but it'll be okay. It'll be all right. It'll be okay. Let's bring in some shadows working up into the hillside now i can keep adding as many of these as i like clean brush i'm painting snow in in the late spring here in the uk and you know something it was snowing a couple of days ago and that's no exaggeration we had this arctic blast come down from from the north i believe and it was down to about minus three or four a couple of days ago and it snowed on what day was it monday tuesday we had quite a lot of snow which was nice, I do like a bit of snow. Certainly to paint it. And of course, you can imagine my little boy Jacob loved it. Look at that. Look how that's changing it. Stick with us, folks. Stick with us. Putting this lovely shadow on here. Clean the brush. Couple of taps. Put the brush in. And I say, if you find this method of blending difficult, please don't worry because You've got the option, you've got that option of using that other method where you put the water next to the blob and then that just helps. But always put enough paint and to blend, always have enough paint to blend because if you don't it just doesn't work. Here's a good tip, make sure the corner's nice and dark, it always sits the picture down well. A couple of taps, soften it in, blend it out. 
kind of frames the picture over this side here we're going to put a few shadows coming down now this will start to give us some idea where the light's coming from where's your light coming from pop your little shadows coming down here so i want to get it coming this way Beautiful. Bit of water. And soften. So again, we've got that nice evening atmosphere, three dimensional style um, sort of mold here. Really nice to do that. I'll put the blending blades away for a minute, folks, and I want to pick up this um, normal number six brush. I'm just going to use the same colour, which is the violet, just mixing more of the same, basically, which is nice. And then I want to get a little bit closer here. We've got 184 likes, folks. Can we try and get, come on, let's try and get 200 likes. Click the thumbs up. If, you, if you're watching on a TV, there's like, if you press the up button on your controller doofer and you get this little thing that um, it kind of puts like three little dots, you can click more and it'll give you the option of giving it a like, a thumbs up. Let's get, let's get 200 likes and we'll feature some more pictures at the end. Viewers pictures. Yeah, come on, you can do this. So light's coming in. Where's your light coming from? It's coming in from this side. Did you wet it? I'm gonna use this color. These are common sayings that people say to me all the time. Where's your light coming from? Did you wet it when I was a boy? Let's put some, um, let's put some directional lines in for shadows. I mean, really, we've still got leaf on the tree, so I'm not gonna do individual shadows uh, as such but you know like from the base of the lampposts what lampposts are they then bring that over here across the across the footpath put a bit of a cast a cast shadow beautiful cast shadows love love shadows the theme of this lesson is is really about shadows in my opinion okay let's just creep here because i want to mix the violet with the gray at this point so i'm going just to touch darker not massive but a little bit darker um introducing natural gray into that mix because i want to get in a few little bits of corners just on these side bits here Just to give it a bit of an extra kick and there's a little bit of interest around the base of this lamppost a bit of a sort of rocky area so just adding a few more little little shadows here and there did anybody else get snow last week we had quite a lot we had quite a lot 206 likes andrew may well spotted 206 likes well done I reckon we we'll struggle to get 300 though on this one. Stick with us, folks. Stick with us all the way through. You've got to stick with us on this picture. Not till you get to the end that these things make sense. Let's get a little bit dark on this edge here. So I'm I'm going back in with this slightly darker colour, just to add a bit of a deeper depth. Deeper depth. I like that deeper depth. It's a good little saying. Deeper depth. I'm just going to make sure things have got a nice bit of texture on here. Get it a little bit darker around the back of the hillside almost to give us an edge to the footpath i suppose you could say there's lots of interweaving paths around central park and really nice little thing to uh, to capture in a in a watercolor and uh, make sure things are really dark down here
So a few people's had snow I can see. I read quite a lot of snow the other day and that was the inspiration for this really. It's quite quite surprising really. Now if you want to make it look as though snow's frosty, how do you make how do you make snow look as though it's more of a let's look at the whole picture here. How do you make it look more sort of frosty? Well, if you think of frost, it's like a skating rink, an ice rink, you know, so it's going to have uh, reflections. So reflections, but without it being too loud that it's reflections. Um, thank you to uh, Rosemary. Thank you to Rosemary. Uh, shout out to you for the um, donation there. Um, I can't quite see your surname, Rosemary, for some strange reason. It just says Rosemary, but thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Four pounds and ninety nine pence donation. Thank you so much. Love the little uh, dancing dude animation. That's great. You're a star. Thank you. Reflections. Um, so let's get close into this. Remember, we are live, so no editing. That's becoming my catchphrase. And we're going to use this grey and violet mix. We're going to splay the bristle. Can we see that sort of splayed bristle here? There it is. And we're going to use this to capture a very subtle, with a silent B, sense of a frosty path. We drag the lines down. And can you see these? I call these skid marks, but you know interpret that how you want to but it just gives that little impression of almost reflections and like sort of depth and various things like that beautiful so you can see and that just helps to give a bit of a a drop it gives a nice drop it does and it's always a nice thing to uh, just a chair um always a nice thing to uh feature there so beautiful thank you so much um so while that's drying off folks i just want to come back and just have another have another look at another question that has uh come through in the watercolor yes. So um, this question has come um, from Georgina, I believe, and, and uh, Georgina was asking about um, the difference in, in watercolours because you can buy watercolour that's kind of transparent and you can buy watercolour that's kind of opaque and how do you know the difference? What is the difference between an opaque paint and a transparent paint? Well, I'll try and show you that. It's more of an explanation, if I'm honest. Um, so if you buy a tube of paint, it'll mention on the back of it if it's opaque or, or is, if it's kind of translucent or transparent. And certain paints have opacity to them, okay? Now, you can make use of opacity now in a picture like I've done here, the skin tone is opaque, which means that when it goes on, it doesn't really show its best side. When it dries, that opacity shines through exactly what has happened in the sky. So the two skin tones in the natural range of watercolours are two examples of opaque watercolour. You've got skin tone dark and skin tone light. You can probably just about make out on the back of the light tube here that it's it's quite hard to get that close so you can get the focus. You can see, see it's as opaque, tiny little opaque there. So using light skin tone in the sky, it's got nothing to do with um, overpainting. People think it's overpainting, so it's opaque. So you paint over the top of the colour so it shows through. Not really. It's more when it dries, the opacity wins. It shines through. Look at these little bits of peach skin tone here. The colour has come through because it's opaque. 
the violet and the gray is transparent where the light skin tone is opaque so the color is shone through it's almost like a like a backlight does that make sense so it, it shines through and that's where you'd use it now a place that you wouldn't use opaque colors is a place like if you're painting inside that pinball machine it's dark in that cave and if you want to to get the impression of depth or you're painting an open doorway or something like an arch on a bridge using an opaque color it would have the opposite effect it comes through it comes forward whereas a transparent paint like natural gray goes back and that's the big difference it's it's the same in the trees as well it's the same in the trees um this is dark skin tone here but even where the gray's gone in the skin tone's coming through the trees and that's exactly why i used those colors and i hope that answers the question i mean you've got the classic example of an opaque color which is is opaque white or a titanium white or a gouache or a white acrylic that's opaque very much for a different reason very very much for a different reason that's opaque because you want to put a sheep in a field or you want to put a white yacht or something like that so that georgina is is how i use transparent versus opaque colors i hope that makes sense hopefully that makes sense um back to the picture <music> So there we go folks that's hopefully got rid of some of the myth of of opacity and transparency if you want to send any questions for the next episode of the watercolor show please do drop them on email um or send them over on facebook or pop them in the uh the comments for the video as well we'll try and include them let's try and get 250 likes again another big thank you to gabby she's still there with a the super chat so generous gabby that's that's amazing Okay, um, here we are, and I want to start to paint in these distant buildings, at least the first bit of the distant buildings, and um, it's about keeping them in the distance. So here is an example of where you'd use transparency versus opaque as well. So using a transparent colour will instantly fall away. Opaque colours will come forward okay so let's have a look number six brush um in fact actually a size 10 brush for this one and do the job nicely so into the water there into the water and um what i want to do here is get some pale gray that's not gray that's not gray there's natural grey, 50 shades of grey, not strong, and then also some natural yellow, which is a sandstone colour, I'm going to use some of that, because lots of the buildings are like a sort of tan colour, these are quite pale colours, thank you to Kim, Kim, you're challenging me with this one Kim, I'm trying to get the name right here, Kim, Schmid, Schmidt, 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 all the way from Minnesota, USA. Lovely. What a place to live. I would love to visit all of the USA. I think it's amazing. Um, thank you to Kim for the uh, $5 donation. Thank you. Via the Super Chat. Okay, so we've got the grey. We have the grey. I'm not going to do the grey. Is take this size 10 brush. I'll get a bit closer in here because we can do that. And I'm holding the brush like a pencil here. It's one of painting these distant buildings. This one here, I'll say it's loosely based on the Empire State Building, but it's probably not. Because I think that's a bit further afield from what I can recall. And every so often, dunk your brush into the sandy colour. Don't clean the brush just pick and mix 
rotate the board keeping it all nicely wet so a nice wet brush i've not really wiped off any excess i'm back to the gray here Lindsay is asking what is super chat so super chat lynn is basically it's a way of donating to the show so if you want to you know it kind of goes into the running um it's it's tucked away at the bottom of the chat screen so if you can see the chat screen you might see like a dollar sign possibly i'm not sure how you can actually use it on on ipads and various things i might be wrong in saying that um i think you can but i don't know how to do it so i apologize if i'm being a bit vague about how to do it look at those colors there now i'm working close to the trees i'll clean the brush actually here's a tip rather than waste that color you know our as artists become tight artists get a second brush clean it so this is a number six brush and then tap that on the tissue and use that brush two taps remember to blend to blend that color down why aren't you using the blending blades here it's a slightly more precise area look how that looks instantly distant i know the feeling and then we'll go straight in we'll go straight in to these two now these are the ones that are for, are for ghostbusters <laughs> i think they are i love ghostbusters one of my favorite childhood films my pride and joy is a ghostbusters pinball machine at the back of my studio you can't see it here um i love ghostbusters let's go straight in Waiting for the new one coming out. The new Ghostbusters next summer. This summer. This summer. I want to say next summer. It was cancelled. It got cancelled because of the COVID thing. Let's bring it in. Uh, big brush. Again, just alternating the colour. So from the grey to the natural yellow. If you've not got natural yellow, folks, use yellow ochre. It'll be a bit brighter, but it'll be okay. It'll be fine. And then that comes across to bridge the gap between the two buildings. And then just before that's going to dry, I've got my number six brush here, which is which is still moist. Is it me or is it moist? We can give it a bit of a soften into the trees, being careful not to um, wash out the trees too much. But look at that. Look at the depth you've got already. Because we're using transparent colours. If... If I was using skin tones, it'd be a bit too forward. But it works in the sky because skies have different rules. For example, you can use a warm colour at the base of a sky and it still looks in the distance because your mind sees it as a sky. Onto this one, onto this one here. The misty buildings on an evening, first thing in the morning, it's like here in the UK, in the mountainous areas like Scotland and the Lake District, even the Peak District where the nice hills, uh, which is close to where we live here in, in Derbyshire, you do get misty hills. In New, York, in New York, you get misty buildings, which has its own beauty. Absolutely. I love the atmosphere of that place. Bringing it down here. Leaving a gap. I've got my little brush here. Just going to brush it down. I love the fact that we've added. Let, let's come back on the whole picture so we can see how we're shaping up, folks. We can see how this thing is developing. We've got distance. We've got foreground. We've got a beautiful sky with these opaque colours shining through. Shining through. Lovely. What I'm going to do next is we're going to work in the trees a little bit more. And then we're going to add some detail into the actual foreground of the picture before we revisit the pictures because obviously we need to revisit the pictures to add um um the pictures the buildings to add some detail shout out to joan walsh for the five dollar donation joan saying keep it up we shall we shall keep it up don't you worry joan you keep watching keep spreading the word keep keep giving us a like let's try and get 250 likes we've got 235 can we get a few more likes thank you joan for the donation five pound also alan crew 10 pound donation very generous alan 
Um, great tutorials, Matthew. They inspired me to paint again. Last time I painted was O-level art back in 1976. That means a lot. Comments like that for me is what it's all about, okay? Um, it's so easy. Life gets in the way of art, don't you? I'm lucky that I do this for a living and I have done for a good um, for many years now. But um, yes, Alan, I'm so pleased that it's it's kept you going um, and it's got you back into it again. And again, thanks to Alan and thanks to Joan for the super chat donation. OK, so let's start to get detail in. Now, we can use whatever brush we want here. Um, it's time for some new tissue. That's getting a bit moist. Put some dry stuff in. There it is. So, hanging around here in the stash, the stash, we've got a... Uh, Lovely little brush. It's basically a rigger brush, this. Now, it's a rigger brush. I call this the rigger brush on steroids because it, inside that brush is a nice pointy brush. But it's surrounded by a size 8 brush. This is a small branch and detail brush. The dark hair holds the colour that feeds the tip. So, we're going to mix... Some natural brown with some natural grey. Now, if you've not got natural brown, mix your grey as normal and pop a little bit more yellow in the grey. We'll talk more about grey later in Matthew Simpson tips, okay? So let's just give this a little bit of a wipe over the edge. So I've not got a huge amount of paint on that brush. I've removed the excess on some kitchen paper. And the reason for that is because I want to be more in control. Um, get in a bit closer into these trees at this point would be quite nice 239 likes let's try and get 250 shall we hold this brush like a pen this reservoir feeds the tip these are called Matthew Palmer branch and detail brushes probably next to the tree and texture brushes these are the most common there's a common um... <laughs> there's a common uh... Matthew Palmer watercolor SOS. Bugger the expense. Let's play the title again. <laughs> I always want to say this. Roll VT. <laughs> There's no expense spared on this show, let me tell you, folks. That is a stray hair. The amount of people that say to me, and I've seen it on emails. I've got a stray hair that's fell off my brush and it's it's mixed with the wet paint. How do I get rid of it? Well, you don't. If you try and pick it off, it scars the paper, so you leave it. I've got one here as well, aren't there? Stray pubic, sorry, so, <clears throat> rewind. Stray hairs just blow away in the wind. After all, it is the spring. So you don't need to worry about it. Let's paint in some winter trees. Love these brushes, stunning little tools, folks. The less paint that's on the brush, the finer the point we can get out of it. This is like having a pen in your hand. Even just a few little flicks going upwards, just a few flicks. Yes, I will put some snow on these a little bit later. I'll pop some snow on. Alison likes the music. That's good because I wrote it myself. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not giving it a title yet. Can anyone come up with a title for the music? Something artistic, no doubt. So I'm popping a few little lines of branches on. Can you see that nice little bit of branch? I'm desperate to put some over this side with it being a big area. Branching out here. Uh, I've got no photographs to work to here. I'm, I am 100% working from the mind. I've always been quite lucky that I've always had a good memory. Do you call it a photographic memory? I've always been good at remembering places I've been. And I can see myself 
sat here, stood here, wrapped up, eating a slice of New York pizza or a hot dog. Again, don't forget to remove that excess. A few trees, a few trees, and just a few flicks. A few little flicks, I've seen them live in concert. Little flicks. Or that little mix. This one I can bring a little bit higher, I think. In one direction. I've seen them as well, sad but true. So, working up in the direction that the paint flows. Look at them, love the trees, love the trees. Loving the trees there. Let's come out on that a little bit. Magical. It's nice to see that nice paint flowing. And I just keep revisiting these trees, but look how that's brought it to life. That's really brought it alive, it has. It always does. It always does every time. What a difference that's made. What a huge difference. Big shout out to Julie Nixon for the 4 99 uh, donation love all the workshops and demos really enjoy uh, my painting now the new book is great that's the animal book yes ready to paint 30 minutes animals in watercolor check it out on amazon folks if you've if you've picked up a copy if you picked up a copy then uh, i would love you to uh, leave a review on amazon because again a simple thing like that makes such a difference again thank you to julie nixon for the 4.99 super chat donation and kim um kim um schmid schmidid schmid schmid kim i'm so sorry for getting your name wrong i might have got it right but i don't know um this is my apologies my donation was meant to be for 15 dollars i've corrected it thanks again your demos i'm learning so much kim it doesn't matter honestly every penny goes back into this keeps it going keeps the show fresh new ideas new tech thank you so much kim for the two very generous um super chat donations loving the trees there while i've got this kind of color on the brush i'm going to come back a little bit here um so just kind of zooming back with the camera here what i want to do is pop that brush to one side i'll i've not cleaned the brush i'm just going to pop it on the top of the water pot actually size six brush what i want to do here is make a stronger version natural brown natural gray nice and rich and then wipe off on some dry tissue wipe off the excess so you've created a dry brush and then give the brush a little bit of a pinch can you see it's all gone nice and spiky what we'll do here is work around the foreground of the snow. I love this bit because this to me is where a snow scene comes alive. See the spiky brush? See the spiky brush? Work along the edge. I'll get a bit closer in for the minute um, just so you can see how the brush is being applied to the paper. Go up into the banking, add some little areas of texture Follow in some of these areas of texture. Some of the shape. Imagine the shape, how it how it goes up into the hillside. You can really see how it adds a nice bit of little bits of earth poking through, little bits of dark snow, dirty snow, dirty, dirty snow. No yellow snow. I'll do that next time. Look at that another stray here. It just leaves no scars it just basically just blows away but you can bring these down from the edge you can sweep it follow the contour it really does make a difference you know with little bits of earth and little bits of texture it's nice to see it's nice to see and um 
it's basically having a very dry brush so there's less paint on the brush spiky bristle spiky bristle and also just slightly weaving across the base of the the trees in the background every little helps as i'm show you the gray horizontals and even just feeding that color into some of the distant trees there it just gives them a little bit of a pop you can see i've lightly fed it into it so nicely feeding yes we are live we just had someone ask are we live we are live um as of the 8th of uh, april at uh, almost 20 past five here in the uk but of course you can watch it back if I spike that brush really well, you know that tree that's overlapping, I can just lightly tickle the edge and that'll give really fine branches. Can you see that almost mist? It's almost like a mist on the trees in the back there. So any large winter trees, look, look how spiky that brush is, but it just puts a bit of texture over the trees there. Over here as well. So very dry as in you wipe off pretty much all the colour. This tree here, we can turn it into more of a... More detail. Just imagine those really fine branches that are almost impossible to paint. Well, this method here, this dry brush method, really works nice for giving that lovely little bit of gorgeous 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 texture let's zoom back a little bit here because i want to do a bit more of this down here um again the color is natural brown natural gray very strong color on the tissue a few times spike the bristles you can see that nice kind of spiky splayed hair thing going off there and uh, yeah it's good to to work on the edge little bits of earth we can put some grasses and things here but don't want a huge amount on this point because imagine that's the edge of the banking look how nice that is how it kind of creeps down love that really good way of working texturizing adding contour and just a few random horizontal lines coming across you've got to be so careful with these um keep that brush dry as in wipe it off keep the brush spiky keep it splayed keep it texturized and it's a nice way of adding an edge beautiful nice wintry coverage big shout out to lynn lynn c thanks lynn um for the four pounds 99 super chat that that cool little dancing dude again Th thanks lynn thank you so much lynn thanks to everyone that's donated so far to the show don't forget to give us a uh, 250 give us a thumbs up give us a subscribe as well folks it'd be great if you could branching detail brush it's still got some paint on um, I feel like I want to bring in a few grasses. Let's get closer in here. I picked up some of the darker colour on the branching detail brush, actually. And pop some little spots and spots and dots on the top. Which is always nice. Especially in this foreground bring it forward over here around the base of the street lamp we're going to bring in some some little grasses and again some little little spots and dots around 
just to give a bit of interest. It does help. If a little helps, of course. Wonderful. Okay, so while that has a few minutes to dry, and of course on the picture, if we zoom back, I still want to be um, adding the buildings and those beautiful street lamps. But so far, we are creating a scene here, folks, loving the atmosphere. Oh, 250 with one off. With one off, folks. It'd be great to um, see that. Um, but what I'd like to do now is I'd like to talk about. One of my favourite sections of the actual show, uh, which is uh, Matthew's watercolour hints and tips. Let's check him out. So today um, on on uh, hints and tips, I'd like to talk about grey. We've we've been talking quite a lot about grey. How to mix grey, the right grey, the different tones of grey, um, for your uh, actual two hundred and fifty likes. Thank you. That's great. Um, your actual um, shadows, because it is so important to get that right shadow colour. And like I mentioned, inside that pinball machine head, there, you know, it's dark. Your mind takes you in that, although you're looking at a two-dimensional screen. Because it's it's the right grey. Now, if you used a grey that contains black, there's one famous grey called Payne's grey. It's a pain in the tube. Um, it's not a shadow colour. It's so important to mix a grey from the three primary colours. So important. Um, and let me show you how. So. We talk about natural grey, here's natural grey, and we talk about it a lot. If I pop a blob of natural grey here, I'll just pop it there for the minute. Natural grey is basically a pre-mixed version of this shadow grey. Now, it's probably hard to see, but if I get that close, can you see that grey here? Yeah, you can see that. Can you see it's gone blue and a bit sort of browny yellow? That is proving that natural grey is, is mixed. It's separated, which is exactly what a mixed colour would do. So that proves that we get huge giant machines to mix this for you. This is how to mix the grey for those who don't know. It's really important to talk about this, okay? So if I take some blue, first of all, I'll pop some blue here. There's the blue. I'll also pop it here for you. Now that blue could be anything from natural blue to French ultramarine to uh, cobalt blue. Then what you do is you add red to it. Now the red I'm putting in here is natural red or alizarin crimson. So you put the red with it until you get purple. Can you see that purple? See the purple? It's a very deep purple. It's very dark purple. I talk a lot about grey. It's quite sad, but it's so important. And then here, we've got a nice light yellow. Now this yellow could be cadmium yellow, it could be aureolin, or it could be natural yellow light. Mix the yellow and instantly, instantly, the colour changes to grey. Now, that might seem a bit of a faff, but I promise you, look at that beautiful grey. I promise you, that is so important. That is so important to use that grey. Now, here, natural grey is a ready-made version of the same grey. The advantage of using natural grey is it's ready mixed, ready to go. Now you can see here, you can see here that that looks a slightly crisper grey than this. This looks slightly warmer. 
What do I mean by warmer? More towards a yellow. This one seems more towards a blue. So what it's giving you, what it's giving you with the grey is it's giving you variation. So if you add a touch more yellow to a grey, okay, it's going to be warmer, therefore that grey looks closer, it was closer to us. Add more blue to the grey, it looks further away. And you can actually change the colour to suit. So here, for example, that's the colour what I've mixed. If I put some more yellow with it, it's going to be even warmer. It's going to be an even warmer grey. Let's have a look at that. So it looks even closer to us. Can you see if you imagine that's closer because it's a warmer colour, it's got more yellow in it, it's warmer. This one's got more blue. Now if I change the mix, if I change the mix and add more blue to that colour, which is very similar to natural grey from the tube and pop that one here, it's now a cold grey. So it's going to slightly look further away. Half close your eyes, squint at the screen, and you'll see the warmer colour looks a little bit closer. The colder one goes further away. So you can control it. And it might seem dull, but every single picture, every picture features grey. Shout out to Isabel uh, for the... I don't know what the currency is there, Isabel. I apologise. 249 PHP. Thank you anyway. Thank you for the super chat um, donation. Very generous. Thank you so much. That's, that's brilliant. Really is. Thanks, Isabel. Love the little um, little animation. Is it a cat? Bravo. I like cats. We've got a cat out here called Daisy. So that's what Grey is all about. Okay. Another hint and tip I want to show you is kind of comes under the banner of hints and tips and also um, watercolour SOS cauliflowers now um a question has come through from pat adams and a few people have been asking about cauliflowers how do you fix cauliflowers what is a cauliflower it's basically when you're painting something like a sky and you think to yourself you know what i want to put a bit more paint in that i want to put a bit more color on it what happens is that your painting is almost dry and you're going with a wet brush and it causes a cauliflower well, let me try and show you let me try and fake one. One bit first time. Now what we'll do is we will basically take some some pale blue. Got some pale blue there, and I'm gonna wash it in this corner here. Imagine that's a flat sky. I'll give that a few seconds just to just to soak in. So a cauliflower. It it's called a cauliflower because the paint edge it looks like a cauliflower edge it's when you take your brush and you look at your sky and you think i'm going to put a bit more paint on this while matthew's not watching and what happens is of course it's it causes this weird cauliflower let me try and show you a, a cauliflower so if i take some water and i do that and it's starting to form a cauliflower now let me get closer in it's normally the sort of thing that when you do it, your heart stops pumping and everything goes into slow motion. A bit like when your biscuit, look at that, that's a proper cauliflower. A bit like when your biscuit falls in your tea. It's that same feeling of fear and dread that you get and the whole world goes into, no, that's a proper cauliflower. How do we fix it? The best way is to go straight in capture it capture it while it's fresh pick up some more blue and simply repaint 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 around it reactivate the color and look it pretty much just washes it away there it is it's completely washed it out folks if you've got blending blades even better but what happens if you had a cauliflower after if you didn't capture it and you didn't notice it until afterwards which is quite rare um, let's say that you painted the sky and went to put the kettle on, come back and you had a cauliflower. How do you fix it? Well, 
nine times out of ten you'd hide it you'd hide it with something which is what you do a lot in watercolors most cauliflowers will happen in a sky so you can paint clouds over it we've got loads of videos on on painting clouds how do you paint a cloud over the top of a a dry sky because normally you want to do a cloud at the point of it being wet so you get the spread but i'll just quickly show you how you can sort of hide a cauliflower if you take some gray you mix it as we've just discussed and if i twist the brush so imagine there's a cauliflower here so i'll twist the brush paper's dry so i'm getting a hard edge well that's fine bear with us anticipations off the fun so a dark cloud it looks a bit rough but what we'll do here look is we'll grab another color maybe some of this light skin tone might be nice for that or some yellow or some orange but a bit of a evening cloud would work quite nice and you can mix in a bit of this color mix it in within it looks a bit rough around the edges so what do you do you clean your brush you wipe your brush pretty much completely bone dry on tissue give it a bit of a pinch and then you lightly tickle the edge of the cloud feather feather the edge feather the edge now if you've got blending blades if you've got blending blades you can simply reactivate the sky okay even if it's dry because of the nature of the bristle but that's made a lovely evening cloud imagine that placed over the top of a cauliflower all your worries are gone all your worries are gone so you can hide it another thing you can do is you can grab a little sponge and you can wash away the entire sky it won't damage the paper okay so a few reasons but where possible try and capture the cauliflower at the point of it being fresh and then go straight in with the color and just paint it out paint over it nine times out of ten it works let's get back to today's demo beautiful beautiful new york is taking shape it really is I'm happy with this i want to work on the buildings now we're going to drop shadows in we've just been talking a lot about gray i hope you enjoyed it, it wasn't too boring or like watching paint dry again a big thank you to isabel for the super chat thanks to all the super chats all the donations are greatly received look at the gray can you see it's got the yellow again and the blue it separates so you mix it back together again and that gray there is that mix we were talking about you've had your crash course in gray it might seem dull, but good for painting monochromes. Okie dokie. Number six brush, we've got the grey. Light's coming this way. Yeah, but where's your light coming from? It's coming this way. And what we'll do is we'll come down here from, from the point. From the point. That was the ultimate crash course in... Uh, cauliflowers rotating the board at this point folks this is where this picture is going to change put these shadows in here clean brush few taps same on this one as well straight down into those trees Notice when you're painting about half of these buildings. If you've just tuned in, yes, I am working upside down for a more comfortable painting angle. But look at that already. Can you see what a difference that's made? You've got, yeah, you've got shadows. Transparent colours again. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. Down here, down here as well, on this one coming down the edge straight down this one's a wee bit different this one's further away so it kind of sits so when it meets the foreground building we're going to do an l shape clean the brush couple of taps on the tissue as we spoke about earlier on the blending crash course 
and we'll give that a nice soften and you can see how that looks a little bit as though it's set back a few more shadows to do here as well this little section of building runs behind so that wants to be darker that uh, wants a shadow on the corner of that building damp brush and tickle it into the picture what a difference instantly you know you can see how these things start to take shape can't you stick with us folks we're getting towards the final bit of the demo now and these are the bits that really do make it think about adding a few little bits of shadows and separations here and there put some lines in i'll put some windows in later as well but i'm just popping a little bit of interest in um into these buildings just little random lines it's it's not exciting um, I'm also going to pop a shadow across the base of this. Now, remember what I said about it being about twice the width of the brush. Clean that brush, a couple of taps. Either put a puddle here or just go straight in and blend it and blend it away. So it completely fades into the picture. Again, it's pushed that building away, hasn't it? So it's very windy outside today. The studio is rattling away here. Pop a few little bits of interest. Every little helps. On the tops of the buildings, I want to put some steps. Obviously, a Nemon concert as well. This is not giving me a good music taste, is it? No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Genesis. Genesis, Phil Collins. And I'm happy. Okay, that's giving levels to the building. Same on the tall one here as well. Look at that. What a difference. Yeah, what a difference. I always think it's nice to put a little bit of detail on. Just little random bits of things little misty spots it's all there it's all there um windows yeah so random windows um basically just going to be lots of vertical lines and then i'd say just randomly do a few I don't think I'd do every single one. I just do a few. And then every now and again I could pop in a little little bit of a separation line. So I'm trying to match these two ish. Beautiful. There you go. That's quite effective. Just pop a few down here as well. And even on the side, just a couple of impressions. Nice. There's a little bit of marking up at the top here on that one. big difference first bit of detail first first bit of detail there which is nice to see on these buildings that is there you go I mean, obviously you can be as precise as you like with these, but, you know, just bear in mind that they are quite far away, as it were, so I don't want to be too precious about these things.
looking good looking good how's it looking folks are we happy with this is it taking a nice bit of shape for you it's basically just the gray um 50 shades of gray again as we often say 270 likes you're doing me proud here folks you're doing me proud Don't forget to hit subscribe. That'd be greatly appreciated. And the notification bell as well. Because then you'll get informed of the next episode or any other things that pop up in between. So I'm I'm just basically adding just random nonsense. We can all do a bit of that, can't we? But it it, it starts to make a nice bit of difference to the picture when you pour all this in it really does every little helps yeah I'm just going to randomly pop a little bit of that grey down here as well just to give a bit of balance to the base of the picture but looking looking nice on the buildings folks happy with that I want to go very diluted with the grey very diluted with the grey there it is massively watery you can see it looks quite blue on on screen um that's because I just want to go in and add a little bit of a glaze to the buildings. Now, what is a glaze? It's a very weak wash of paint that you just put on to hide, hide bland areas. You've got to be brave. You can smell the fear. It just kind of gives a bit of, yeah, looks good. Just a bit of, you know, interest kind of thing. Which would be very nice to do. Love that. Can't go wrong with that. Really happy to see that in there. Same here as well. Just a few little random bits of that extremely pale grey here and there. Just scattering around. and along here as well these are if you didn't know i'd put them on it's the kind of thing that you wouldn't really spot but i think it's just a nice way of adding that extra little bit of detail to the area it does make a difference wonderful back to the building briefly just a few little sharper lines on some of these corners. Which is great. Your little lines and things it's so addictive adding that nice bit of detail brilliant 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 wonderful thank you uh shout out to cynthia victor hi cynthia thanks for tuning in um cynthia's put a, a super chat donation of 25 dollars thank you very generous again thank you for your passion and your humor glad you enjoy it not many people get my sense of humor but cynthia you're on the same page as me thank you um for the uh, super chat donation what i want to do now folks is i want to have a little bit of a chat and a review of a watercolor product that you might not have come across and then we'll get back and put the finishing touches to today's watercolor demo check this out
So here on the screen, lots of you have got hold of these. What you can see there is the uh, fantastic watercolour brushes. These are a pretty new product, folks. A brush I designed uh, just before Christmas, it was. And we launched them November time, I want to say. Um, and people have been asking for some tips and tricks on them. So let's have a review. As you can see, there's three different sizes. You've got small, medium and large. Um, I just want to show you the differences between them and the tree and texture brush. It's called the Matthew Palmer fantastic again everything you're seeing is available on watercolor tv so i'll grab the brushes and we'll head over to the palette and again i just want to show you a little bit of of how you can use them and things you things you can do with them things you can do with them so i want to use the medium one actually and i've done this before but a nice little sort of demo just to show people that are maybe new to the channel have not come across these products before so i'm cleaning the brush in the water this is the medium size one these aren't just normal fan brushes and you'll hopefully you'll see why or all, all the differences so here is natural green let's get it sorry about the palette making chronic flatulence and um, one side of that brush has got light green on and the other side is going to have the darker green on so basically on that brush there is two colors you can see it painting quick quick trees is just one of the many things that you can do with these brushes and i've got to admit i've put about two or three years worth of working to getting these brushes to market so please do enjoy them a traditional fan brush is all the same look at all the different lengths of hair that you get on that brush can you see all the different lengths of hair you get on it that's what makes it special. So flat to the paper, wiggle from side to side. Okay. Already you've got a tree and you've got light and you've got dark. So you've got the light coming in from this way, catching the tree. Now what we can do to take that a little bit further is we can shoot back to the palette. We can basically mix all those colors together. And we can give it a stipple, give it a good old stipple. And the brush is gonna all spike it, even more spiky than before. Look at those individual prongs. And the prongs. Common question, um, is there anything that you need to do special to protect your brushes? Good question, just come in there on the chat. No, honestly, clean them. Try not to store the brushes upright while wet because paint water runs down into the shaft and the paint cracks try and leave them flat until they dry and certainly don't leave them in water but watercolor brushes nothing fancy is is required at all that's just a quick question that uh, just came through so now we can stipple we can stipple around the edge and over the top now this is basically adding texture and a few individual leaves to the tree so Stippling away, adding a bit of bit of texture. I mean, it's just a simple, nice tree, but it works every time. I could also uh, actually grab over here in the stash. I've got a, a palette knife here. Can you see the palette knife hiding away? Um, if we come back to the painting here, what we can do is we can actually use this to scrape away some branches. You can use a fingernail for this. Or you can use like a, a plastic card or something. The palette knife's worth picking up if you get a chance, if you ever see one. So just putting a few branches weaving in the tree. Obviously you don't get a huge amount on the summer tree, but that's quite effective, yeah? We've got a few there doing the rounds. And then if I grab the uh, size six brush and that's the color that we used in the snow the brown and gray mix we'll just use that and basically what i want to do here is i want to paint in the trunk of the tree weave it in leave some gaps 
and loosely attach this to some of the scrapes that you've created so you get a bit of light and dark can you see the tones so you get light and dark working together you put as much time as you like into the actual tree but it doesn't want a huge amount you might prefer to use a finer brush obviously it's up to you back to the fan brush and we can pop in a nice little bit of a grassy you can put some little those sort of tufts of grass but that's a simple little tree you can do with those fan brushes you can use the palette knife to scrape off some color over the brown as well if you wish but that is quite a three-dimensional looking tree folks hopefully you can see that with the branches and everything we've been through but that's just one use for those brushes the basic story behind the brush is you can do so much with them you really can and i don't want to put too much time into this but there's a product that about three years two and a half three years worth of development has gone into them um well worth checking them out folks all natural hair these as well so bear that in mind if i take some of the skin tone light on one side of the brush and some gray on the other side of the brush we spoke about clouds earlier makes lovely clouds two-tone look at that gorgeous cloud two-tone clouds in your sunsets love them yeah clean the brush wipe it almost dry horizontally soften them even put some bit of distant rain coming down you've all seen that in the pictures yeah or some rays coming down from the sky so that's a way you can paint beautiful clouds you can soften the edge so if you was hiding your cauliflower, it all fits in. There you go. So a bit of a soften. Put some little finer ones at the bottom as well. That's a quick little little evening sunset sky bit of falling rain and of course if that had the background of a you know a nice little yellow or red you know you've cracked it but there you go folks that is the um brushes and that i've got to say that i'm kind of reviewing my own product which i don't normally do but i'm very proud of those brushes so please do check them out if you're not already beautiful little tools to enjoy fabulous let's get back to the demo to put those all important finishing touches and right at the end yes because we've got over 200 likes i will be uh, taking a look at some of the viewers paintings as well but let's get back to the demo magic that's what i like about this show folks it's not just about one painting it's all the little bits in between um hints and tips q and a's all that wonderful stuff all that wonderful stuff getting towards the end now folks we're going to put some of the final bits of detail on we've got these beautiful lamps to go in i'm just going to pop me uh put my palette knife back over there in my little artistic corner let's get some gray folks more gray i should write a book about gray I call it 50 shades of gray i reckon it'd probably do quite well do you reckon street lamps sending you dizzy i know that much let's bring this in here nice strong gray here you can be as precise as you like with these but i want to paint one side one half one half that's my plan please make sure you head on over to the old uh, facebook page for those 
people that are new to me, Matthew Palmer artist. We also have a group on watercolour called Matthew Palmer's Watercolour Group. Um, as we're standing now, there's about two and a half thousand members in the group. It's a lovely, friendly place to be. Check it out. Now, what I'm doing here, I'll show you this close up in a second, but I'm painting one half of both the street lamps. We'll get close in in a second. It's just the grey, just the good rich grey there. I'll do this one as well. This one's obviously, oh, hello. That's the wrong camera. That's the right camera. Got a bit excited then, did you see? Let's get... Let's get into this one. This one's quite small. We'll take a close-up look at this before we, we blend it in. But we're just going to work up the edge. So I'm actually painting half of the half of the lamp. So you can see in that half and that half there. I'll rotate it this way. We'll get a little bit closer into this. And what I'm going to do here is simply have a slightly lighter gray. Not much lighter, but a little bit lighter because I want to blend this thing in. So you've got that instant lighter side, you see. So it's simply just using a bit of a bit of water to dilute the colour. You get that ever so slight three-dimensional feeling to it. These would make a lovely little bit of detail because it's such a rich colour to use. Making sure you're reactivating the grey. Because the grey is thick enough, it's dead easy to reactivate it, it really is. really is a nice simple thing to do but rotating your board to a more pleasing angle is always going to be a very useful tip you can see the lighter side of it can't you and that's what's going to make this thing have a little bit of a little bit more what a difference that makes it just brings it all forward let's do the same on a smaller lamp a little bit fiddly down here Just while I'm blocking this in, folks, I'd love to uh, mention a little bit about the uh, live watercolour workshops. Now, I've been teaching these for over a year now. Have a think about getting involved. If you want to paint along with me in real time, live, nice and steady, not like this, all, all steady and relaxed. There's one on pretty much every weekend. The latest one coming up is on the 11th of April. But if you're watching this later on, after we've filmed this, there's one pretty much every single week. Head on over to watercolour.tv, click on the workshop tab and you can see the workshop. You can watch it live or at any time after and just paint along. While I'm doing that second lamppost, let's run a little advert advertising and just showing you some examples of the live virtual workshops. And we'll come back to this very, very soon.
So there you go, folks. If you're not taking part in a workshop, please have a little look at them over on watercolor.tv. Onto the picture here, those lamps are pretty much in place and they do really push everything back into the into the distance just want to quickly do something on the on the heads of the lamps here on the actual glass globe of them we know where the shadow side is so just using a pale little bit of gray we're just going to basically darken one side of them and pop a few random diagonal lines on the other so you can see here that I've just blocked in one side and then popped a few diagonal lines on the other. If you clean the brush and wipe it almost dry and then you can just lightly tickle that in, but it looks like 3D then, don't it? I'll show you again. So on this one here, if I pop in some, pretty much blocking that side, but still made up of diagonal lines. And that just put a few on, clean the brush, wipe it dry. We've got the tissue here, look and then just tickle it in. It makes it look three-dimensional, don't it? Where the lamps actually sit on the ground. We spoke a little bit about displaying the brush, reflection, where you could have a little hint of reflection of the lamps. That would be quite nice. It's up to you to decide. The choice is yours at the end of the day. I always think it's a good thing to do. It's your call. And here, I've got a craft knife. And a craft knife is good for a few things, but in a picture like this, scratching some texture into the frozen footpath of Central Park. Gives it a bit of crispness. You could even, in some of the taller trees, add a bit of snow to the branches. You could even lightly scrape off a bit of colour almost down one edge the lamp to make it look as though it's catching a bit of bit of light can you see down here as well i love that snow on the tree doesn't that look nice just just at the back there just little hints of little bits of snow in the trees Makes a lovely difference, that, don't it? You've got to admit that, come on. It really does. Keep picking the bit of paper that it picks up, but it is cutting the paper. I often say, you know, don't be afraid of it, but it's true. What a difference that that makes it just puts a little bit of snow on it um and that's just a normal sharp craft knife as you can see there it does make quite a difference and it looks lovely on the on the footpath as well it really does make quite a big difference to that so worth getting a nice piece of Thick watercolour paper, at least 300 gram, 140 pounds, and your craft knife will not have any issue. I'm just taking the tape off here um, on that one. People often say, what pen do I use to sign my pictures with? Well, over here at the back of the studio, I've got these uh, waterproof, fade-proof, uniball pens. These are nice. And on a picture like this, it'd look lovely, just probably in this corner here. Well, we'll move the board over there and we'll take a look back at this picture now it's 
now it's finished you can see all the wonderful detail love the buildings the gorgeous snow on the trees look at those opaque colors that we spoke about shining through the clouds and that's made a lovely hopefully <laughs> a lovely watercolor picture uh, winter winter in central park folks pleasure to do that one i hope you enjoyed that folks thanks for being around for the uh, watercolor show i just want to show some of the uh, viewers um painting wonderful so let's take a quick look at some viewers paintings that have been sent in i know some of you are quite keen to have a little look at this so let's just um get this thing all 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 fired up and ready <laughs> so um there we go folks a few paintings um this one uh just to whisk through them again this one is from anne harris anne harris well done to you for sending that one through this one is from uh rosemary rosemary a lovely painting there rosemary of stonehenge of course uh this one's from rose clayton got the beautiful um and the swallows would it be in the sky there lovely atmospheric reflective scene and this one is from andrew murr as well andrew murr beautiful beautiful picture well done if you want to feature one of your paintings it was a last minute thing that folks on the show but if you want to feature any of your paintings on the uh, next episode please do get them sent over on email let's take another look at the picture there is new york in the snow very detailed watercolor picture starting at the top uh we'll have a little look down the picture there really enjoyed painting that one i hope you enjoyed watching it um love love the gorgeous opaque colors coming through the sky of course the beautiful buildings and that gorgeous snow that featured throughout the picture again big thank you to everybody for sending in the questions big thank you to everybody for sticking around watching the show it's a long show the watercolor show but there's a lot to feature in it so always a pleasure as always and um my name is matthew palmer please do subscribe to the youtube channel um right on cue anytime now there you go subscribe and hit the notification bell give us a thumbs up keep watching the channel keep keep spreading the watercolor word keep the paint flowing and get yourself booked onto a virtual workshop and i will see you next time on the watercolor show big thank you to everybody that supported the show via the super chat so keep well keep safe and as always keep the paint flowing see you in a bit